Hi, I'm Rob Butler, I'm a cardiologist in Stoke. Uh, my area of expertise is putting balloons and stents into people's arteries to unblock them, often in the context of a heart attack. So our angina is a discomfort, uh, usually in the chest, but it can be anywhere from the diaphragm up to the tip of the nose. It's caused usually by an, a, a lack of oxygen going through to the heart muscle. Uh, and it, you, most often it's, it's due to furring up of the arteries of the heart, but not always. It, it can be due to other things such as uh, severe valve disease uh, and anemia. So, so angina is typically caused by the furring up in the arteries of the heart, driven usually by, by uh, high cholesterol, and that's fed in, into with other risk factors such as smoking, blood pressure, family history, diabetes. Um, less so with weight and fitness, um, but it gradually blocks and not enough oxygen in the blood can then get through to the muscle. And the harder the heart works, the more oxygen it needs, but if that supply is limited, it doesn't get enough and you start to feel angina in the chest. So typically, it's, a, it's, it, it's supposed to be angina is, a, is a, an ache or a, a heaviness in the chest. The, the key thing is that relationship between the, the ache in the chest and, uh, and exercise, so that when people walk, the pain comes on. When people stop walking, the pain eases off. And it's that relationship. So some, sometimes people have a, atypical symptoms. It, it might be a heaviness at the bottom of the chest. It might be in the chest or down the arms or in the back, up into the jaw, even to the mouth and the, and the, and the teeth. But what characterises it most is that relationship between exercise and the discomfort you get. So you might get pain down one arm, but if it comes on when you walk and it goes away when you rest, it's usually angina. So there's a different parts of treatment of angina. There's on, on the one hand, trying to stop the process, the furring up getting worse, and that's about managing their risk factors. So it's about treating cholesterol, it's about treating blood pressure and diabetes, losing weight, improving the diet, improving exercise. They're the things that stop the angina over time progressing. In, in terms of managing the symptoms of angina, you then have two, two parts to it. The first bit is about needing tablets. That's tablets that slow the heart down, like beta blockers. Tablets that open up the arteries of the heart, like calcium blockers and nitrates, amlodipine and isosorbide. If, however, we get to two or three drugs and the angina still isn't well controlled with drug therapy alone, then the next step are the mechanical things, and that's what people probably most heard of, and that's balloons and stents, where we unblock an artery, or bypass surgery, where open heart surgery goes around the blockages uh, to restore the flow. Activity levels are, is, is a difficult one sometimes, because a lot of it depends on how much you did before. If you weren't particularly fit before, having angina isn't, and we treat it isn't going to make you fitter. So there's very few situations with heart disease where exercise isn't beneficial. Uh, and, and angina, exercise is almost always beneficial. So if, you, if we treat angina um, with tablets such as beta blockers and preventatives like statins, then adding exercise, losing weight, improving fitness is as powerful an intervention for reducing risk of events as the tablets are. However, people who are already quite fit, extremes of exercise increase risk. So mild to moderate levels of exercise reduce risk, but you get to a point which is difficult to give an, a really accurate point about where it is, where suddenly risk starts to go up again. So if people are very fit, they're doing very high, high competitive levels of fell running or cycling, and they want to get back to that, that needs to have a fairly frank discussion with the, with the clinical team. If we asked anybody what could they do, they're all the things that people would expect. I'm always going to tell people they've got to stop smoking, they've got to lose weight, improve their fitness because they're the things that can be done at home and, and 
will be in addition to what we do in the hospital. We're still going to treat the angina with tablets, or you may need balloons and stents. We're still going to do the preventative stuff with the statins and the treatment of, of blood pressure. But it's in terms of helping yourself, it's about a, a sensible, healthy diet, a, a reasonable amount of exercise, improving the weight so your weight gets down to as near to the ideal as you can be. The lighter you are, the less weight you have to carry, the less the heart has to pump, and the, therefore the less angina you get.